Hey guys, Ryan Kennedy here with the Star Guys, and uh, hey, I am excited for you guys to meet my friend and brother here, Tony G. What up, what up? His actual name is Tony Grebmeyer, but everyone knows him as Tony G. I'm a legend in my own mind. And only his own mind. Yes. But he does, let me tell you a little bit about him before I throw things to Tony G here. Uh, he is uh, one of the owners of a company called Ship Offers here in Centennial, Colorado. Uh, what I think is way cooler, or just as cool as, is uh, he has a podcast, and it is called The Tony G Show. Remember many, I said I'm a legend in my own mind? And only in your own mm -hmm. mind. How many shows have you done so far? Uh, nearing 100. Uh, I used to be in radio. I spent uh, a ton of time in radio broadcasting. Hung up, hung up the mic about 18 years ago, and then I had this passion to kind of get back into it. So in 2016... Really, I launched in January 16. I got really passionate about pushing out episodes. So, mm -hmm. got back into broadcasting. It's uh, definitely one of my passions because I get to talk to you know entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, CEOs, CFOs, and it's my sweet spot. It's like you know, it's a piece of me that you always have is kind of your past, and it was a way for me to kind of marry my two talents that I love uh, talking to people, but I also love talking about business. Give me, give me the deep voice, the introduction there. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Kennedy. Oh, I love it. I love it. Hey, so uh, here's the thing about Tony. Uh, I met Tony. He's he's in recovery. Been in recovery for from uh, alcohol addiction. Yeah. For how many years? Coming up on nine years and twelve fifteen of this year. Nine years sober. Yeah. Almost. Congratulations. So I met Tony in recovery. Um, he is an inspiring individual. He uh, makes me a better person, and I think you're going to benefit from parts of his story. Uh, but what he's going to talk about today, his big, because remember, we want to find stories of people finding their big or uh, or haven't, uh, who found their big and gone after it, or who have identified their big, but they've got all sorts of excuses and reasons why they can't do it. So Tony G is going to talk today about, uh, share with us your story of going from a disease mindset to what you call an empowerment mindset yeah. and what that's been like where it all started sure uh, what it's been like the fears and struggles that come up along the way and what keeps what the things that hold you back and the things that propel you forward yeah uh, no that's I love what it. we want to hear all right I think my story is is common I don't think there's anything amazing about my story I just grew up in a small town in Santa Cruz California uh, my mom uh, did the best she could as a single mother raising my sister and myself uh, at an early age, I saw my mom being that person who did anything she could to put food on the table for my sister and myself. So I had a, a mentor early on uh, in my life. And I watched my mom be a special ed teacher for well over 30 years, work two to three jobs at a time. So that always was inspiring to me. And, and my mom wasn't like opening her purse and saying, here, honey, take take anything that you want and just go get what you need. Mm. I did steal from my mom and I've talked to a lot about that on my, <laughs> my road to recovery and what that looks like is that I did take from my mom things that I wasn't proud of. But looking back in, in retrospect, uh, I've been able to, you know, I, I've been fired from one job, one job over all these years, right? And I, and I say- because Where was I, it? What job? I gave my brother an ice cream cone at the boardwalk. I got an adopt, I have an adopted brother. So I held a lot of jobs by the time I was 18. It was 14 or 16. I forget the number exactly. And I tried everything. Like I tried to figure out like what was that one thing that I wanted to do or become. And I just found entrepreneurship is like the thing for me, right? So starting businesses, I used to hold baseball card shops in my garage and invite people from the neighborhood, put flyers down around town, tell people to come to my house and buy baseball cards on the weekends. It didn't mean if it was like blowing uh, the roof for people and weeds or whatever it may be, pulling them. Like I was always into doing something yeah. to try to figure out how life worked, right? Life works by getting into action. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, my career uh, was in radio broadcasting where I ended up meeting my wife. I retired out right after my son was born. And I partnered with a couple of my childhood best friends that I grew up in a neighborhood with. We all went off to college. I did the community college route. I, don't even, I didn't even graduate. What I saw was an opportunity, um, and that's been one of my bigs, opportunity. Seeing it, seizing the opportunity when it knocks. Like doing something instead of saying, ah, not today, not today, not today, I'll do it later. Like I literally, uh, from the time I graduated high school, the next day I moved off of that, I moved out of the house and I literally went to college, started a two year uh, career in community college, I played water polo. I was a, a goalie. Um, 
you know, I get to brag about what I did, right? I was a three-time All-American in high school and in two-time in college. And I had a dream in the back of my mind of trying to get to the Olympics to play. In water polo. In water polo. Dude, I, it's I, not where I you're on a this. horse, right? Not it's not where you're uh-huh. on a horse, no, no, right? No, no, okay. No, yeah, yeah. It's so uh, I had this dream of wanting to uh, play in the Olympics, and I actually got a chance to come to Colorado in my high school career, and trained at the Olympic Training Center, and I traveled to you know Russia, Finland, Sweden, Denmark to go play water polo with uh, a bunch of other guys from the junior Olympic team. Had a blast, had a lot of fun, and what I realized was this dream is what I've always kind of had to have in front of me to keep me moving forward. I had to have something inspiring, like I wanted to work towards. We were talking about it this morning, right? Yep, Italy, yep. right? You got to have something in front of you that you're working for. It's never like you're going to achieve it, but you got to be working towards it, right? And then that thing's going to keep moving from you. Uh, Matthew McConaughey talked about it, right? He talked about like, I'm never going to be good enough, but I'm going to be good today. And that's enough for me. Um, and so... I, uh, I ended up getting injured playing water polo, and I just didn't know how bad my injuries were. My knees got really, really bad. And so after kind of getting out of water polo, I transitioned into playing basketball as a hobby. That hobby kind of led me to playing five and six days a week. And what I realized, I had a dream to go play in the Olympics for water polo, and then I had a dream to go play in the NBA for basketball. So it's crazy. He did neither of which. but No, 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 no. It's the manipulation in the head that tells you like you got to put something in front of you that's my business advice to anybody you got to put something big enough that challenges you to work really 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 hard at it well I got injured again playing water polo and basketball and I ended up getting into some serious pain addictions after having multiple knee surgeries so what do you mean pain addictions I started taking pills all the time started drinking all the time yeah and so When we talk a little bit about like the disease mindset, the disease mindset was I didn't know better, but once I did and I started abusing it, that's when things got really, really bad. At first, you know, doctor said, you know, take this, this will help you you feel better. So I did. And then I started chasing that feeling. That's my addictive personality. Look, 14 jobs by the time you're 18, there's something crazy in that. And then chasing, you know, the dream of going to the Olympics, the dream of playing in the NBA. These are the addictions, right? Then I get into business with my two childhood best friends. We don't know anything about business, about supplements and, and fulfillment. And we figured it out along the way with a don't quit mentality. Mm-hmm. And I remember walking into the program of recovery and not too long after I was walking, I think it was in San Francisco with my family. Hold on, we, let, me, let me back up a little bit. What, what made you walk into the program of recovery? My mom 12-stepped me. Mm. Well, my life was already messed up. Like it was jacked up. Like I was, my wife and I were separated for uh, three, about three and a half years. Um, I'd keep going home and then leaving. And oh gosh, it was horrible. Like I'm so grateful and lucky to be where I'm at today, to be here in the room talking to you. You know, I got to the edge of death. You know, I literally tried to commit suicide. And that, like, that's a big part of my story on 10-9 of 2008. I attempted to do that. And I received a knock on the door from a buddy as I was writing my suicide note. He came over and he gave me a big hug. And uh, John said, you know, Tony, your life has meaning and purpose, but what you're doing right now doesn't. It, see, it wasn't about money. Wow. It wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the marriage. It wasn't about a family. It wasn't about that I had tons of friends. It was that I was stuck up in here, like in this this disease. This disease is in my head. Um, I can be my biggest enemy and I can be uh, my biggest fan, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so on 12 14 of 08, that's another thing about me if you really want to know a key fact, is I remember dates. Dates are the most important thing that you'll ever remember once they become something important to you. So uh, 12, 14 of 08, I called my mom. I was in a seminar course and I needed to ask her a question. So she, as moms do, they always ask their kids, like, how are you doing? And you're like, oh, I'm doing great. You know, well, moms and parents know that that's all BS, right? They know how to dig deep and get to the heart of the matter really, really quick. So my mom asked me a series of questions and I said, you know, mom, I'm doing better. I, I really see things are gonna get better down the road. You know, more or less, let me just be. And she was so kind and she just mm. pressed really confidently on the gas pedal. She never put the brakes on, she just confidently just put it into cruise control and just we kept getting a little faster to the point where at 44 minutes into the conversation, because she had dealt with my father who was, you know, an untreated alcoholic, um, she'd gone to the rooms of Al-Anon and been around recovery. She said, you know, 
I think the, the men and the women in the rooms could help you. And I didn't know anything about the rooms. I never even knew about alcoholics. I didn't know about any of it, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I listened to my mom intently. And I said, you know what, mom, you're right. I do have a problem, I need some help. And that was the part of me identifying the disease, right? So I had the pain pills, my marriage was on the rocks, my business was on the rocks, my friendships were on the rocks, I was living in an apartment, drinking, using, every single night, everything was just kind of crazy and chaotic. And I said, fine, and I went home and I took a test online and I quickly figured out that I had some addiction issues. It took a test to figure this out, huh? Well, because I wanted to make sure, right? Like, just because my mom said it, I had to go prove it, right? And so I quickly proved uh, to myself that, you know what, I did have a problem with uh, alcohol and I had some unmanageability in my life. And I called a buddy of mine, um, Chris, and I said, hey, would you mind taking me to AA? And he said, yeah, I'll take you, with, you know, without a hesitation in his voice. The next day I went to a meeting and I heard my story and I knew I was home and I've never had a drink since. And that is really kind of the, the part of identifying the disease mindset. Now, yeah. the disease for a lot of people doesn't have to be drugs and alcohol. The disease mindset is that I wasn't thinking clearly. I wasn't thinking mm-hmm. effective. Like everything around my business and my marriage and my life got better when I got out of the alcohol and out of the drugs. And I started working on becoming a better human being. So tell us a little bit about now in a way we just went to Starbucks. And when, when we were coming back, you talked about the power of serving others and how this is what it means to to move into away from a disease mindset and into the empowerment mindset that it is about service so tell us a little bit about how service allows you to get there and also stay there yeah i don't mess up who the quotes from perfectly but i got two that i live by right service to many leads to greatness and be the change you wish to see in this world from Gandhi. Those are the two that really resonate the most with me. Now, I got all the biblical ones, but those are the two that I can wrap my head around really, really easy, right? And I can talk to anybody about it. Yeah, yeah. So service to many, what does that look like? Well, if I can get out of my head and into my heart and then into Ryan's heart, I'm in a much better place because in my head it tells me I'm not good enough, right? And I know that's not to be true today, but that's the way that I shift from the one place of not doing well to helping others. By helping others, I kind of forget about all my problems, right? I forget about everything that's going good or bad in my life and even the ugly stuff at times. And let me interrupt you a minute because I want people to hear that, that uh, when things aren't going well for you or when you are struggling, the best way out of that is not to think your way out of it, Mm -mm. but it's actually to start serving others because that does something that gives us gratitude. Yeah, so my sponsor that I picked up here in Colorado instilled something so simple Every person that I've coached, I mean, I've coached hundreds, if not thousands of people on this one philosophy, be of service. How do you get into service? You know, there's tons of service opportunities around your community, but you don't even have to go that far. Mm -hmm. And I tell people the easiest thing to do is next time you're at the grocery store, push in a shopping cart. And someone would say, well, that's what those guys get paid for. See, that's my pride. Yeah, Yeah. Right. So instantly I'm saying. Have you ever gone to the grocery store and you go into actually like grab a cart and there's none there and they're all in the parking lot? Well, the guy can only push so many or gal can only push so many carts. So the moment that I shifted that mindset to, hey, you know what? Let me be of service. Let me let me help. See, helping. I don't have to do it all. I just have to do my part. What's my part today? You see trash, pick it up. You see a need, fill the need. Right. There's a lot of great lessons in movies and talking to people. So when he told me pushing the shopping cart, do you know I've never been able to go to a grocery store and look at a parking lot the same in six and a half years? <laughs> Every time I'm in a parking lot, I'm like, thanks, Jim. Let me push the shopping cart in. And now it's started is a little like a mission. I've got some friends that I'm with and they'll, they'll Snapchat or send me photos. They're like, hey, I pushed in nine today. And for me, that's the game, mm. right? Mm. Remember what I was saying earlier? You got to have something in front of you. You gotta have, for at least me, I gotta have something in front of me that I'm working on all the time, or I get bored. And when I get bored, that takes me out of what I'm doing, right? Because then I'm like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. It's no fun. So I like challenges. So as an entrepreneur and as a business owner with two partners now, well into 16 years in business, yeah, I had a disease mindset and I work on it every single day. And that was eight years ago. And since then, we've been able to turn it into well over a $100 million business by being of service and I I coach and I teach people at the office that you know what you're not here to do the job that you think you're here to do Hmm. 
You're here to help another human being today to have a better day. And by doing so, it yeah. comes back towards you. And people say, well, can you make money doing that? I'm like, I've been making money every single day since I flipped that mindset to just get into service. Service leads to greatness. And I'm not saying it's great in an ego sense, but I'm saying what we've been able to do is great. Hmm. Our company, we ship over 40,000 shipments a week around the world in 43 countries. So these are small little box you know, size orders and we're shipping them to customers all around the world. And I love what I do and people go, well, how do you, how do you find greatness helping your employees? And I'm gonna say, because I'm a stepping stone. Our business is a stepping stone for their life. Hopefully this video serves as a stepping stone in your life to let you know that inside you is greatness. The opportunity you have today has never happened before. When the, the opportunity knocks at the door, answer it. Even if it's not for you, answer it. Listen, see what there is, see if the opportunity exists for you to do something about it. Maybe you know somebody who could use that opportunity today for themselves and share it with them. I've always said, share whatever it is that's going on in your life with another human being and let them decide if it's for them or not. So talk to us a little bit about um, when opportunity knocks. What is the, uh, because I get this question a lot. I ask this question a lot. What's the thing that keeps us from answering that door? Or so another way to think about it, what's, what's our biggest, what's Tony G's biggest fear or biggest struggle? What are the things that keep you stuck? Because I'm, I'm assuming, I'm guessing the things that keep you stuck also keep you stuck and they keep me stuck. What, what are those things and what keeps us from answering the opportunity knocks door? Why don't, why wouldn't everyone do it? Why don't we yeah, do it all the time? You know, Ryan, I'm going to pause for a moment. And call an audible. First, uh, I'm going to ask you. Uh oh. Opportunity knocks. Yeah. What's the first thing that goes through your mind? Like the very first thought when someone says to you, "Hey, Ryan, I got a great idea. I got this. Would you want to help me? Would you want to do this?" You got a program of recovery. I know what my first thought is, so I'm just going to let you quickly answer that. Oh man, I think all sorts of things go in my mind. Um, if I want to say no to it, it's um, even if I want to say yes to it and I say no to it, unconsciously I can start telling myself, I'm not cut out for that. I'm not good enough for that. He's, Tony G's, are, he's been doing this for years, so he's going to be better than me. He's been working a program longer than me, so I need to look to him rather than offer myself. I mean, there, uh, there's all kinds of reasons that keep me from doing it. And it's almost always, and I talked about this yesterday on Be Live, fear and shame. Man, those two things can hold me down longer than anything if I let them. But the things that the things that make me answer it are, are the the sense of adventure, and like, yeah, I have something to add to this, or um, uh, man, I want something that makes me curious. So I'm learning to go after the things that. Well, I'm really curious about that. That fascinates me. I want to learn more about that. So I have a disease mindset, as we talked about, right? Mm -hmm. So. My sponsor was able to point it out that I had 36 years of living a certain way. And I only have eight years or eight and a half of living a new way. So my old mindset is the one that has my 36 years of thinking. And my first reaction is to say no. Yeah. No, not today. Don't have the money. Don't have the time. It won't work for me. Somebody else yeah. should do that. Um, you know, I really want to. Oh, and then I have to go talk to my wife. Oh, Excuses, I, man. Right? You get into that mindset. Yeah, so yeah, what's yeah. the opposite of no? Yes. Cool. You saw the movie Yes Man, right? I tell people all the time. Yeah. Be a yes man, at least for the time being, while you're trying new things out. They may not work, but if I held 14 jobs by the time I was 18, I was a yes man. I was trying <laughs> to figure out what I wanted to do. And opportunities knock. Your job is to answer. You don't have to bring them in, but you have to at least explore the opportunity. And it doesn't mean you say yes to everything. Mm -mm. There, be, because when you know your story, when you know you're calling your path, you actually say no to a lot more things. Yeah. But not the opportunity, right? Yeah, you want to at least explore opportunities because you never know. Like, I think the big thing now is Bitcoin is really big. Everybody's like trying to push Bitcoin. I mean, you've heard MLMs, you've heard you know, I got this great business opportunity. You should take a look at it and blah, blah, blah. Here's the thing. Don't say no. Say yes to at least listen because two things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. A, education. You're going to learn about an industry you may or may not be aware of. And number two, you may learn a little bit more about what your friend's passionate about. 
doesn't mean that you have to jump on board. It just means that you're listening and you're actually becoming a friend. Part of it is getting outside of myself, right? And it's understanding more about what you're passionate about. That's that's building a relationship. Yeah. yeah. Instead of that selfish self-centeredness where it's all about me and nothing about you. If somebody's cool enough or crazy enough to come and tell me about something, I'm listening. Now, it doesn't mean that I say yes and I'm jumping on board with you. Yeah. But I'm definitely going to add the filter of being of service. Hmm. Right? So disease mindset is going to be no. The opposite is yes. doesn't mean I'm going to do it, but it means yes, I'm going to listen. Hmm. So when my wife says, hey, Tony, do you want to help around the house? My first thought, what? Is no. No. And I know that's not right. So I have to pause. I have to step back for a moment. I have to ask myself, look, I am so blessed to be back in the house with this woman. Our marriage is going. We're coming up on 19 years. And I need to say yes, because I'm in a partnership. I'm in a relationship. So at my house, I'm in a partnership. At my office, I'm in a partnership. And so I gotta, I gotta remove me from the equation and think about the betterment of the family, the betterment of the company, where are we headed, what are we doing? So that's the empowered mindset today, is the lessons. They're no longer blind spots. We talk a lot about that in uh, my Destroying Excuses course that I teach. We talk about blind spots are things that you are unsure of, you don't know about. Get in your car, you're driving down the road, and all of a sudden you get sideswiped and you say to the officer like, I didn't see that person, that's a blind spot. Once that accident happens and you are driving away, that is no longer a blind spot. It's a choice. Because now you have what? Mirrors, people, things to yeah. tell you about yeah. that. So you don't do that again. So you gotta be really careful about what you're thinking about today because you're making excuses about it or you're in the driver's seat now knowing what's going on around you and you make better decisions. So let me sum it up in a sentence. Stop making excuses and serve others. Oh yeah, 100%. You wanna change your life? Go do something for somebody else. That's good. That's it. That's good. So Tony G, where can people connect with you if they wanna connect more with you, if they wanna learn more about, uh, if they wanna hear more about the T Tony G Show and follow you on, uh, follow your podcast. I'm just gonna move into this office. So wherever this guy's at, you can find He's me. He's gonna be here. Uh, so iTunes, you can just type in Tony G Show. You'll find some episodes that uh, I've been on. So if you want to hear my story more in depth, you can do that. You can also hear some really inspiring stories from people who've overcome all sorts of obstacles from my buddy Sean Stevenson, the three foot tall giant, to Bedros who came here from another country and has built a huge fitness empire. Lots of inspiring guests. One of my favorites not too long ago was Dave Sorson, who was um, U.S. Airways' last passenger off when it landed on the Hudson. Really? That was a really inspiring story because I just hmm. seen Sole and I just saw the whole movie and then yeah. I'm thinking about this guy, how he was of service. And so what I'm not looking for is the money story, right? I'm looking for the story of heart. I'm looking for people who've overcome challenges and opportunities that they've been given that they've actually followed through and done something with. So those are the kinds of people I'm gonna interview. I'm always talking to entrepreneurs, right? But I don't want the entrepreneur story. I want the struggle that's led them to where they're yeah. at today. And if I can get that, I kind of feel like I'm on the same plane here. Yep, yep. Um, so you can do that. You can check out shipoffers.com. That's our online uh, website and happy to connect with you any way I can. If you message me on Facebook, I'll respond. Facebook, Instagram, you on all the social media? Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, brother, thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Stay tuned for more because we have more stories coming at you. Hey, good to be with you today. What's this show called? This is called The Start Guys. This is the start. People starting movements. Stories. Start? Start, yeah. Start listening and following this guy. Double down. Share this today in your feed. Like, hit the share button. Do it. Do and it. And share it until your finger can't share anymore. Can you share it too? I will. All right, we're going to do this. All right. All right, guys. Good to be with you. Love you all.